The Logitech MX Master 3S is the reigning champion of productivity mice. As a result, people are always looking for a competitor to unseat it, especially if it's a cheaper option. That is where Keychron comes in. Their M6 mouse looks like it could be just that competitor. It's got similar looks, great specs, and comes in at about half the price. But which one should you buy? Let's take a look at the similarities and the differences between these two ergonomic productivity mice and decide which one is worth your money. I'll use the following criteria for this comparison video. I'll look at design and appearance, feel and touch, ergonomics, buttons and wheels, connectivity, battery, accessories, and finally price. I'll then tally up the results and declare a winner. Let me know if you think any changes to this criteria would be more fair in the future by leaving a comment. And now let's begin with design and appearance. The Keychron thrives with simplicity. It's got a clean look with a simple single material appearance. The black version shows this simplicity, though some might argue that it's a bit on the boring side. The available white version is similar, but I think particularly suffers with the black scroll wheel throwing off the appearance slightly. For Logitech, the design is cool and much more visually complex. It's got multiple materials and as a result, different shades and textures. This makes it more visually interesting, but less clean looking. The white model with the silver accents looks much cooler in my opinion than Keychron's white model. On the black and graphite versions, it's close, but the Logitech models look more interesting and more premium to me, which gives them the slight edge overall in design and appearance. It's close though, and honestly, it's very subjective. Picking up the mice, some of the things that we notice in the first round continue on. Keychron's cheap, basic ABS plastic just isn't that nice to touch and lacks in overall excitement. It does feature some rubber on the main scroll wheel, but this doesn't feel particularly nice either. Logitech, on the other hand, features a nice soft touch material that's honestly luxurious and feels just lovely to use. There's slight ridges on the back, which also feel nice, though I'm not sure they actually add much in terms of grip overall. The scroll wheels both feel much more premium in their materials and in their operation. Where Keychron does have an edge, though, is in weight and glide. The Keychron is 40% lighter and moves very easily across your desk. Logitech, on the other hand, requires a good bit more effort to slide. Unfortunately, on a subjective basis, this isn't a gaming mouse, and to me, that light and easy sliding actually feels a bit cheap in this case, and the solid weightiness of the Logitech feels premium. So I give this one to Logitech as well. Next is ergonomics. I'll keep this one short, because if you've seen my review of the Keychron, you already know that the ergonomics don't work for me. I think the side profile is the easiest way to see the difference. It's all about the middle ridge, the highest point of the mouse, and then the angles that it comes down at. The MX Master fits like a handshake, holding your palm comfortably. The M6 is like an awkward handshake, one where you don't know if they wanted a regular handshake or a dap or whatever. Now I've got average sized hands and the Keychron feels uncomfortable to me despite its ergonomic shape. Watch the review if you'd like a more complete understanding of what I mean. This one goes to Logitech. As we move into buttons and wheels, I promise that this isn't a clean sweep by Logitech, even though it's gone that way so far. Buttons and wheels feel like a place where we should be close, but yet it's not as close as it should be. Logitech features quiet clicks on their latest 3S version, which are so much nicer than the traditional clicks on the Keychron. Forward and back buttons are very similar, with the only notable difference being consistent sound on the Logitech compared to inconsistent sound on the Keychron. The scroll wheels are where this category truly breaks apart though. 
scroll wheels are my biggest complaint on the Keychron. The side scroll wheel has too much resistance, causing you to actually pick up the mouse when spinning it if you're not specifically holding it down. The main scroll wheel though is even more egregious. Just listen to it. If you want more horrible scroll wheel sounds like this, please consider subscribing. By the time this video comes out, we will either be really, really close to our 10,000 subscriber milestone, or we will have just passed it. Either way, thank you so much if you're already subscribed, and if not, please consider joining the family. We'd be very happy to have you. Now by comparison, the side scroll wheel on Logitech feels lovely, and there's enough weight to keep the mouse on the table. The primary scroll wheel is Logitech's top-of-the-line MagSpeed scroll wheel, which allows for tactile scrolling or fast free scrolling without the need to switch modes. Finally, there is a bonus button by your thumb, which can be used for gesture controls. I don't personally use it, but it unlocks some cool possibilities for power users. Big time edge to Logitech on this one. Finally, we get to connectivity, and the first one where Keychron shows their power. Keychron dominates up and down the connectivity category. They offer the same three device Bluetooth capabilities. They provide more flexibility with their 2.4 gig USB receiver, giving you both a USB-A and a USB-C version in the box compared to a single USB-A Logi Bolt receiver with Logitech. Keychron also offers a wired connection option, which is impossible on your MX Master. On top of those connection options, Keychron offers 1000 Hz polling and a more expensive version with 4000 Hz polling. I'm not sure Logitech has ever officially stated their polling rate, but it's believed to be 125 Hz or somewhere around there. Keychron also has them beat on DPI, offering up to 26,000 DPI compared to 8,000 with Logitech. Connectivity is pure domination by Keychron. Next is battery life, which is an interesting one. Logitech has a 500 milliamp hour battery, whereas Keychron's is 800 milliamp hours. However, size isn't everything when it comes to battery. Logitech quotes 70 days of use on a full charge, which aligns with my testing. Keychron advertises up to 120 hours. Converting hours to days is a bit tricky, because to my knowledge, Logitech doesn't share what they use as their estimate for calculating days. However, even if you figure that Logitech uses a conservative six hours per day, that equivalent is only 20 days for Keychron. Now, you could also point out that Keychron's number is using 1000 Hertz, which can be lowered to save battery. So assuming that you're using that lower polling rate on Keychron to extend your battery, what's a realistic multiple? Two times more would make 40 days. Three times more at a lower polling rate would still be under Logitech at 60 days. Battery life is always tough as there are a ton of factors that go into it and this comparison is not apples to apples, but I have to give this one to Logitech. Now we move away from the mice to everything else that comes in the box, the accessories. Logitech includes a very basic USB-A to USB-C cable, the same one they've been shipping for years. They also include their Logi Bolt USB-A receiver. Keychron, on the other hand, provides the finest quality USB-C to USB-C cable that I think I've ever used. They follow that up with not just a USB-A receiver, but a USB-C receiver as well. And they include an adapter to use your receiver closer to your mouse to cut down on latency. Clear victory for Keychron here. The last category is price. Logitech's MX Master 3S retails for $100. You can sometimes find it cheaper, or you can probably use a coupon at some point, or you may see it with some bonus included, like a free travel case or a mouse pad or something like that. Also, in the US at least, any order with one of these are gonna qualify for free shipping based on the dollar amount. The Keychron is $50 for the 1000 Hz version. Since this style isn't really gaming friendly, I don't think you really want to consider paying the extra $20 for the 4000 Hz version, though that exists as well. Shipping is typically around $10, so overall, 
we're looking at about a $40 difference between these two mice, edge to Keychron. So if you do a pure count, my ratings are at five to three for a pretty clear victory for Logitech. What do you think though? Are there any categories you would have rated differently? Let me know down in the comments. Overall, I think this is a pretty solid win for Logitech. However, the situations where I think you can justify getting a Keychron would be if you absolutely need to save the money or if you only want a mouse that can be used on a wired basis. Otherwise, if you're looking for an ergonomic productivity mouse, the MX Master is the better buy, even at a $40 premium. If you decide that either one of these is right for you, you can pick one up using the affiliate links down in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.